So in this video I'm going to show you how to join the motifs for this blanket with a slip stitch join that is done on the back of the motif and through the back loops only of the, the last round. So the benefits of this are that you can do long seams all in one go with one bit of yarn because you're just crocheting straight across um, as opposed to sewing together where you are limited to how much seam seaming you can do by the length of your sewing thread. So this gives quite a strong um, seam which is also um, quite attractive and sort of uh, inconspicuous so you know it's not really decorative or anything it's literally just a kind of functional join um, that we do on the back of the work and allows your motif to shine through without a distraction of uh, fancy or uh, textured borders. So to make the motifs I used a 3.5 millimeter hook um, but to do the slip stitch join at the back I'm going to go up um, I suppose you'd call it two hook sizes because I'm actually going to go up to a 4.5 millimeter so that's a whole uh, millimeter up from this hook size that I used to make the actual motif and this is just because the slip stitch has a much tighter gauge and it will actually pucker and pull your work at the back if you don't go up a hook size so you would actually join with exactly the same colour that you have used for the final rounds of your motif so that it blends in. However, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to use a different colour just so that you can um, see better what's going on. So ideally you want to have your motifs, if your motifs are different like this, uh, where I want different colours next to each other, you should have your layout all planned before you start joining. If you've got motifs that are the same colour sequence or you've got very random things anyway and you're not really bothered about uh, what's going where, then you don't have to think too much about that. Obviously my own motifs, um, this tends to work best with motifs that have the same number of stitches. So we will be joining on the wrong side. And for this motif, because it's got a chain two in the corner, we have to remember that one of the chains belongs to one side, and then the other chain belongs to the other side. So wherever you're joining, you're going to be making sure you're joining in the, in the correct chain. So we are working um, back loops only. So that is the loop you see at the front from the wrong side. So. I suppose you could say it's front loop only if you're working from the back, but the aim is to have this front loop on the front exposed after we've done the joining. So let's call it front loop working from the wrong side into the first stitch. And then because this side you're actually going to be looking at the right side, we'll be going into the back loop of that one. And then you're going to join the yarn just by pulling it through, chain one and slip stitch back into that exact same spot. So remember a slip stitch is just grabbing the yarn, pulling it through and then you continue to pull it through the existing loop on the stitch without any further yarn overs. And now it's a simple case of just matching the front loop of this piece which is on the wrong side and the back loop of the next stitch on the motif at the back and slip stitching. So you're aiming, you've got the right sides of the fabric facing each other and you're aiming to leave the front loop of the right side exposed. So we're just matching up stitch for stitch and slip stitching and again I know I've already said this but I am using a hook size that is one larger well two sizes larger because I've gone from 3.5 to 
to here's a bit of a tight one I've gone from 3.5 to 4.5 for the join so I'll do it in this color first I'm going to go all the way along and I'm going to join in pairs of two so this is why it's quite important to know what your layout is before keep going all the way along and hopefully if you've made your motif correctly you should have a correct um, stitch count so here I do appear to be one stitch out so I'm going to go I'm going to go back into this same stitch again so if you're like one short it's always better to go into a stitch twice than skip a stitch on the side you've got too many and then into that last one so I'm not going to fasten off because I'm actually going to carry on and join the next two motifs so this is what it looks like and obviously this is this is the wrong uh, a different color so you can see um, the stitches obviously if you did it in the same color then that would blend in so what do you do now when you are ready to join your next two set of stitches so these are the next two I want to join and um, the only thing I need to do is chain one to factor in the seam I'll be making across for these two because I'm going to go and seam I'm going to seam these two across here but once I've done all the seaming for this sequence I'll then obviously be opening these up um, joining those together and seaming along there so I need to chain one to jump the seam and then I need to remember to be going into the correct chain in the corner so remember there's two in the corner one belongs to this side and then this chain belongs to that side so I need to go into front loop of this from the wrong side and the back loop of this chain on the right side of this motif and then carry on and so this next bit is just exactly exactly the same so I'm just going to carry on to the end because there's no difference here to what I've just shown you and also if I wanted to join um, another two motifs into this sequence I would just do the same thing that I did here I would chain one and then add the next two so I'm going to go ahead now and finish off this seam and I will uh, meet you back in a minute so I'm actually going to finish here so you're going to cut the yarn and just fasten off so let's have a quick look at what it looks like so here we are looks like this Obviously, as I said, you would add additional sequence to however um, long or wide your blanket was. Um, and this stands out because it's a different colour. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this out, make it in the other colour, in the matching colour. And then you can see what it looks like before I join this uh, final seamed for this little section. So I've um, joined all these in one axis, so um, let's say this way up I've done the vertical seams um, and now I am ready to do these horizontal seams. So you just want to make sure you haven't um, accidentally twisted these at any point um, and then I'm going to again just use some of my locking stitch markers just to help sort of hold stuff in place not so important on this round because obviously you've already got um, these the vertical seams but it can just help stop too much movement and too much stretching of 
you know the joins you've already done so I think I'm just going to where's the court there and there and then probably do this one as well I think it's the edge ones these edge ones are the most important because they've got obviously in the middle we've got these seams we've already done so again this is not really entirely necessary but I think it is quite helpful especially if you're doing much bigger pieces because sometimes if you imagine you've got a big blanket that's you know maybe 60 motifs by 90 or something you don't you know really want to be putting too much pressure on the you can see here actually where I've got two different dye lots of the same colour yarn I'm not really that bothered about it I don't know if you can spot it on the on the camera but again this just goes to show that you should really try and get yarn from the same dye lot anyway let's do the next seam perpendicular to the first one I showed you um, so it's basically exactly the same really I'm going to use the same color this time rather than a contrasting color just because I'm pretty sure you know what we're doing now so remembering to identify these two chains in the corner from the wrong side of the work it's the front loop and the right side of the work it is the back loop I'm joining the yarn by just holding a tail end at the back I'm chaining one and then I'm slip stitching straight back into the same stitch sh stitches really so I'll show you another quick little tip you can actually sew this end in as you go along obviously with a slip stitch you have to do a slightly different technique to catch it in as you go so matching up the correct loops on the motifs the first thread the tail is going under the hook then I slip stitch next slip stitch so front loop of the on the wrong side and back loop on the right side the tail end goes over the top oops I'm not in shot over the top of the hook when I slip stitch front loop on the wrong side back loop on the right side tail end goes under the hook before I slip stitch front loop on the back of the work back loop on the right side of the work tail end of the tail it goes over the top of the hook before I slip stitch so that's all you're doing you're kind of alternating going under the hook and over the hook every time you make your slip stitch join and that will sew in that tail end really nicely save you a little job later on and you can always tell which to do next so here obviously if I have it over the hook again then that's not being caught in whereas if I go under then this yarn is catching it so I'm just going to keep doing that until I actually run out of run out of tail I think I'm going to run out of tail okay that's good I'll just forget it now so I might when I come to sew the ends in I might just sew this one back the other way a little bit but as you can see that's pretty well well concealed there so let's carry on with our slip stitch, slip stitch join on the wrong side in the back loops only and then we mustn't forget the chain in the corner so remember we've got one chain of the corner belongs to each side so you mustn't skip that chain otherwise you end up with a hole and now we're going to chain one to jump over that seam that we made previously so before we did a chain one and we ju we were just jumping over an invisible seam this time we are jumping over that previous seam we made 
and then we need to find this first chain in the corner. So front loop on the wrong side and back loop on the right side. And we're just going to uh, carry on in the same way. Slip stitching till we get to the next seam stitch and doing a chain one to jump over that. So let's have a quick look. So on the wrong side looks like this and on the right side it is looking like this. Pretty neat. Obviously after washing and blocking you'll get an even better result but that's pretty good. It's quite neat. It's quick and easy to do and it stops you having to stop and start with short pieces of thread that you, you know, the, that's the downside of using, of sewing them together with this uh, slip stitch join. You can do each strip, each seam in one continuous sequence. I'm going to go ahead and do this final uh, horizontal seam here. So here we are. It's all been joined. Um, this is a nice secure join. It's really good for blankets because obviously blankets will be getting a lot of um, fabric movement like this as you're moving it around. And the slip stitch join at the back um, it's less likely to come undone than short bits of sewing as well. So that's why it's really good for blankets. Um, I probably wouldn't use it for garments uh, just because I don't think it's actually the neatest finish you can get. It's not, you know, um, for my liking for clothing, I like to have a, quite a precise and neat join. Um, for a blanket, I think it's fine for clothing I, I don't think it's um, got enough finesse to for finishing clothing with um, however um, for blankets it's great it's secure it's easy uh, it's relatively quick as well and you know uh, you haven't got all short ends to worry about from sewing you can just use a continuous ball of yarn for long seams